Hello and welcome to this panel, part of the conversations under ET MSME Talks. I'm Eloni Pat. Now, the focus of this conversation today is how investments in a healthier workforce, in an environment of information transparency, and at the time of ongoing digital transformation in many organizations, can help accelerate the growth in the MSME sector. Now, today we have three very diverse ecosystem stakeholders: a accrediting agency, an information and comms tech player and a healthcare provider who play very important roles in strengthening the sector. Now, first up, we have Prasenjit Ghosh. He's the director of Smera, and he's the group chief business officer of Accurate Ratings. Welcome, Prasenjit. Hi, thank you. Next, we have with us Rama Sambandhan. He's the head mid-market at Airtel Business. Rama, wonderful to have you here at the Economic Times. Hi, good morning, thank you so much. And finally, we have with us Kulin Shah, COO and co-founder on Surety, which is a healthcare platform. Kulin, wonderful to see you again and to have you here on this panel. Nice to meet you and learn me again. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Prasenjit. You know, and from the lens of Smera, there are 64 million registered MSMEs in India. Give us a, uh, a sense of how many are accredited and what are the challenges you know that you face when you attempt to rate these uh, MSMEs? Yeah, um, so there are some 6.4 million, uh, 64 million MSMEs registered in India. And when we look at the SME ratings, uh, it's a very small population which is uh, currently rated. Smera has rated 54,000 MSMEs so far, and we have a large market share. Um, so if you look at across at a systemic level across our rating agencies, it will be less than 1%, significantly less than even 1%. So, so that's the kind of penetration of SME ratings. And I think uh, SME rating, uh, Smera's SME rating evaluates the entities uh, on benchmarks, which are specific to SMEs. It's on eight point scale. SME 1 to SME 8. Right. And if we look at the distribution of our SME rating, we see that a large part of our um, uh, rated pool is having above average trade worthiness in relation to the other SMEs. And now, there is a lot of, when there is a lot of asymmetry, information asymmetry in the market, mm. a good credit rating provides a lot of confidence to the lenders. And these rating distribution really augurs well. Uh, for the MSMEs in terms of getting access to finance from financial institutions. But the challenge that we face is, one, I would say the lack of awareness. Uh, we also see that there is a fear of uh, low rating. Uh, at times, you see that they're not so keen to go through the rigor of the rating process. Um, and there are other challenges in terms of uh, uh, documents not really always available in terms of annual reports or stock audit reports. Um, at times, they're not uh, keen to share details, uh, sanction letters, or customer details, because that becomes an integral part of a rating process, uh, yeah. be it customer details, supplier details, banker details. Um, yeah, so some of these are the challenges which you see uh, that, we, that uh, while doing the SME ratings. All right. Okay. So less than 1%. I mean, that's, uh, uh, you know, so a great opportunity, I believe, uh, uh, yeah. you know, for the MSME. In, in fact, I think, you know, uh, the financial institutions should look at better incentivizing the MSMEs with better SME rating. That will really create a lot, uh, will create more pool in the market for SME ratings. All right. Okay. You know, that's a good point. But uh, uh, Rama, to come to you now, you know, uh, how do you view this? Uh, the credit rated businesses, obviously, they'll be uh, much higher up, you know, uh, for your uh, when it comes to the off take, perhaps. Uh, how do they score when it comes to your business solutions? And you know what? It, and and uh, could you differentiate for us? Uh, you know how those other the the the, the millions of other small uh, MSME businesses. How do they compare when it takes uh, when it when we talk about the offtake of your solution? See, firstly, uh, let me tell you, MSMEs are in a in a situation where 
they want to adopt to digital uh, transformation and also there is in their mind that what would be the right spend right so these are some things which is in their mind so given the current situation i would say that there are two places where the msmes to should invest one is to be they should be investing on digital digitization and technology to be more com uh, globally competitive and second they should also be investing their time in terms of knowledge right training people getting them used to the digitization so that becomes very critical and i see in the uh, msme is a fast growing adoption is still in the early stages but they are willing to adopt to these digitizations some of the products which is a right fit for an msme which is for example our fast growing product is the airtel office internet which is a combination of internet security as well as some parts of google workspace right this gives them uh, immediate digital transformation that's number one we also look at uh, cloud security and iot which is also some of the uh, key products which are critical for these fast growing smes so you know when it comes to this uh, digital transformation you know which you spoke of many msmes are challenged by these uh, entry level barriers uh, you know what are the strategies that uh, you are suggesting i mean you named a few uh, when it comes to these people because investments uh, for these msmes as you pointed out you know are a big challenge and in today's environment you know of of uh, high interest rates you know this uh, global downturn uh, that uh, we are all seeing uh, how are you as airtel helping uh, businesses overcome these challenges during these depressed times and scale okay firstly it's a, a fast paced digital age right and it is essential for msmes to be stay up to date with the digital framework and also remain competitive in the market right so some businesses can spear, seek some digital experts and consultants who can guide them to the latest trends and technologies uh, investing like i said investing on training development programs for their workspace uh, workforces can help the businesses keep the pace of these rapid changes in the digital landscape uh, msmes can also adopt strategies such as implementing cloud solutions leveraging social media and digital marketing uh, which can explore new business models and they can be stay they can stay ahead of competition right while we say that airtel has a suite of con connectivity cloud security go to market solutions th that has been helping msme overcome digital transformation challenges and scale up so we partnered with nsic which makes it easier for these smes to access these solutions and like i said one of the highest selling product is our uh, office internet which is a bundle product of security and google workspace uh, which offers high speed connectivity uh, and security infrastructure and we also have some innovative products like airtel iq which is the world's first integrated cloud platform uh, which is used for it is an omni channel platform which is available on a pay per use model and airtel iot uh, is a very strong product uh, because it's network uh, related and we carry about 47% uh, market share in the country right now and you also have some security integrated uh, applications which are future ready yeah and with the multi layered cyber security solutions airtel can protect cyber security breaches for customers across industries because when we look at sm uh, msme when they implement all these transformation it is important that they keep their data secure all right thank you for that but you know Kulin, coming to you now, you know, as employees and as uh, businesses uh, shift to these digital tools, you know, uh, to tech-based solutions, how has that sort of revolutionized employee well-being from your vantage, you know, mm -hmm. as a player in the healthcare sector? And how can the efficiencies of healthcare delivery 
be improved by perhaps streamlining some of these uh, operational processes in MSMEs. Right. I think um, in the digitization at SMEs has played a big role in terms of you know getting more employee benefits available to them uh, without the hassles of you know manual operations, without uh, going through you know increasing their teams only to kind of you know manage these uh, benefits. So I think digitization has gone a long way for these SMEs, enabling them, empowering them to ensure that they are now able to now you know. Uh, look beyond just salaries and compensation, mm -hmm. right, when it comes to employee benefits. And this is something that we've seen in the last few years, where the SMEs have gone digital, they've gone online, right, uh, especially the, uh, you know, since the GSTIN has gone online, right, uh, we've seen that almost every SME, uh, you know, has, uh, has some kind of a linkage to the, uh, you know, going digital. So their priority is that, we've completely removed the need for any kind of a uh, human intervention when someone wants to get, say, employee healthcare benefits by just going online and picking up your employee health benefits plan and making it as simple as buying uh, any other subscription product online, right? Uh, with the payment revolution with UPI coming in, right? Now these SMEs are able to kind of make payments online without any hassles. And, you know, everyone, you know, today also imagines uh, an SME being someone who, you know, owns a small store and, you know, makes only check payments, right? I think SMEs have gone a long way since that. I think that today's SME is someone who's carrying a laptop, someone who's, you know, having a access to the mobile phone, um, who's making online payments, right? Someone who's accepting online payments, you know, for the businesses. And hence, we've seen that even employee benefits is, uh, you know, following the same suit where they are able to, you know, uh, uh, probably even uh, have a better adoption than large enterprises because they oh. are, because in, yes, absolutely. Because in large enterprises, they still have, you know, large workforce to manage multiple things, right? And SME is always conscious of, you know, how big uh, his or her team would be. And hence, they always prefer digitization over manual processes. So we've seen that as a big shift when it comes to SMEs, especially on the, um, you know, employee benefits part of it. And because of, you know, technology, we've seen that the cost of adoption has gone down and hence they are even able to now, you know, get more uh, benefits to their employees because digitization has obviously reduced your operational expenditure. Uh you know, this is good. I mean, this is interesting to know that, uh, you know, a lot of small businesses are actually, uh, when it comes to adoption of uh, healthcare, you know, perhaps more agile uh, than uh, you know, perhaps their bigger uh, counterparts. Uh, but Prasenjit, you know, coming to you, uh, the formal lending sector counts uh, for only about 15% of addressable credit needs for uh, SMEs and you know the, the problems that SMEs face I think you mentioned uh, a few of them uh, and of course there are those high interest rates the lack of collateral uh, on the lender side you know which is very often uh, those lenders are banks uh, there is an issue of trust arising out of their inability uh, to, to, to properly evaluate risks uh, in lending to uh, MSMEs, as you pointed out, because of the information asymmetry. So as an MSME credit rating agency, you know, uh, how do you see your role in powering, especially since, you know, there is a great opportunity here for you uh, and to bridge this gap between the businesses and financial uh, institutions? And uh, the linked question to that is, you know, uh, what's been the impact of credit rating agencies, you know, when you see from your vantage uh, uh, in, in, in sort of deepening the access of uh, Indian MSMEs uh, to credit, especially MSMEs which are new to credit? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all know that uh, the SMEs uh, form a crucial part uh, of the Indian economy, uh, but their heterogeneity actually makes it difficult to evaluate them. Now, over the last uh, 16, 17 years, we have built a very strong expertise uh, of evaluating the SMEs uh, through our SMRT process um, across industries, across geographic clusters, different sizes, over multiple business cycles. Uh, we have built sector specific uh, benchmarks and a huge repository of uh, data uh, for BR comparison. 
So we are in a unique position to support the financial institutions um, uh, with uh, and help them in the credit decisioning and pricing decision. And uh, and 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 we we leverage a lot on the technology. And today we are able to come uh, uh, come out with the SME ratings within 24 hours of receiving all information from the uh, from the NSMEs. Oh, that's pretty uh, quick. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, so in addition, we help uh, financial institutions in building their SME rating models, internal models, or validating their uh, existing models, uh, doing portfolio head check of the credit portfolio, SME credit portfolio. And on the other hand, we see that uh, MSMEs, uh, actually we see that one out of every three MSMEs, and they come back uh, for SME ratings in the subsequent year. Uh, so, so uh, actually, a regular renewal. What we have seen is uh, it really helps them to improve their performance, and um, it also builds, uh, I would say, confidence within the lender fraternity and the trading channel. Uh, we we've seen that uh, MSMEs uh, they submit the uh, SME rating and tenders, uh, which makes them more. Um, Credible to get bigger orders. It, uh, we have seen that uh, it opens up doors for them with MNCs and corporates. Uh, we have we also have seen that it provides uh, potential access to other sources of finance, which which can include even the private equity segment. Yeah. Uh, coming to your uh, other question, which is on the impact of. Uh, yeah, so there, I think uh, uh, many of these MSMEs are new to credit, right? And uh, some of these industries are pretty new and evolving. Uh, so the SCB rating really helps lenders in understanding the industry as well, in addition to the credit worthiness of the of the of the of the entity. Uh, so so they can make better credit decisions, and thus in a way it helps in uh, deepening the. I would say credit penetration across clusters. Plus, uh, uh, Smera also does. Uh, they, we conduct sustainability grading of SMEs, MSMEs. and uh, that allows uh, lenders as well as global companies to understand the sustainability, sustainability quotient uh, of the entities. Now, improved sustainability performance uh, of Indian MSMEs uh, will make them more acceptable uh, to the. To the lenders and to the global companies also is is this sustainability i mean are you seeing this uh, across the world is this like a uh, is this more specific to india when it comes to small businesses or are you seeing these being adopted worldwide the well, sustainability getting adopted worldwide i think india is still at a nascent stage uh, but we see a lot of uh, traction uh, there, I mean, the entire ecosystem is, I would say, driving towards a more sustainable future. Uh, I mean, it is still very early days for the MSMEs, so to say, but increasingly we see uh, there are queries coming in and with uh, global procurement managers asking for, uh, you know, they are actually making the sustainability a part of their procurement process as well. So, right. so increasingly exporters will kind of need to look at adopting uh, 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 sustainability measures. Uh, and we, we know that increasingly lenders going forward will also look at uh, green financing and uh, look at entities which are more sustainable in the future. So that will become very uh, important in coming times. But, you know, uh, can uh, an MSME, which may not have a credit rating, still go in for sustainability ratings presently is that possible or, or you need no, sustainability to rating, yeah so actually the the ESG rating is uh, is is fairly complicated and we need to read i mean we do that i mean we do that ESG rating through one of our subsidiary uh, which is ESG risk.ai india's first ESG rating company and it's a pretty comprehensive taxonomy where we need to look at thousand indicators while assessing one particular company and these are typically meant for the large companies who make their disclosures. Exactly, right. That is not really possible for the MSMEs. There we have a different grading framework mm -hmm. and you have very limited set of indicators that you can look at while evaluating these MSMEs. Right. So framework is very, very different. Right. Okay. But you know, it's interesting that, you know, there is a framework and, and, and as you say, there is an interest. 
you know um, and and uh, yeah. as you said sustainability i think is now core to so many businesses so hopefully you know we are at least on the path and yeah. uh, you know we can only scale uh, going yeah. forward uh, uh, but you know uh, rama coming to you uh, how do you recommend you know these msmes because now these msmes businesses are all sort of working in remote dispersed settings uh, you know when it comes to digital transformation how do you recommend that msme adopt all of these initiatives while they're still working in these uh, remote or dispersed settings right so uh, digital transformation initiatives can be challenging for msme because like you rightly mentioned they are in a remote or a dispersed uh, setting right there are several strategies that can help them adopt digital uh, transformation initiatives successfully right first they need to identify areas where they want to really do this digital transformation which can have a significant impact in their business right they can begin with implementing simple tools like cloud based software digital payments uh, online communication platforms and so on right it is uh, so this is a simple investment that i would say this is the first step for the digital transformation uh, and it is also important like i mentioned earlier that they need to invest in people's training and development to ensure that the necessary skills to use these digital tools effectively right? mm. Uh, msmes can also uh, benefit from partnering and with an established digital service providers like airtel who have a, a wide range of connectivity conferencing solutions cloud security and uh, go to market solutions uh, with these strategies msmes can overcome challenges of digital transformation and thrive in the remote and dispersed settings uh, now location is not a con uh, concern anymore or a constraint they can work out of anywhere and still stay connected get this data uh, instantly all right you know um, this is uh, i think uh, uh, kulin to you next and you know after that i think we'll uh, go in for the uh, last uh, bit of questions but kulin to you first you know uh, someone spoke of uh, the uh, uh, lack of actionable insights you know and the fact that there is data asymmetry information is much i think prasenjit spoke about that but i was curious to know how is onshority tackling this challenge of actionable insights data gaps you know uh, which we know result in the low degrees of insurance penetration in msmes um, and they want that deep personalization as well at affordable price points so you know how do you balance all of these things out right <clears throat> and a very interesting question meloni um, so the reason why smes have uh, in general you know not seen a lot of penetration of insurance products is because of you know uh, the technology not being there in terms of you know getting these you know rather you know getting these insights from the data that is available out there today right and now a lot of the data is digitized uh, in various pockets so no one is really focused on you know getting all of these data points together Uh, putting them in a central kind of a data warehouse and then crunching and understanding what are these who are these SMEs what are the kind of products that they require and what is the kind of personalization they will require right today today SMEs are you know seen as either small stores or they'll be seen as some agencies but okay. every one of them right has a very different requirement for example from an IT ITS company's perspective right they would require products like cyber insurance they would require personal indemnity right uh, companies like uh, you know a, um, restaurants and cafes which are also msmes right the first thing that they require is that you know they need to retain and uh, you know hire the right uh, people in their uh, restaurants right and um, for that they need the right employee benefits programs out there right so from that perspective we've seen that having the right data sets and the ability to marry multiple data sets together to get insights is what we are doing at onshority today we have got multiple tools and uh, engines which are built which are able to now understand who these smes are what are the what are the kind of functions that these smes are doing what are their revenues like what are the you know how many employees do they have what is the age group of these employees so on and so forth and then we are able to kind of pro provide the right products 
and because we are providing the right products we are able to make um, you know healthcare and health benefits accessible to smes across the country not just restricted to say urban india second thing that because we have such kind of data sets we are able to customize the products that smes require making them affordable by giving them the right solutions unlike you know a lot of other counterparts you know who are kind of creating one product fits all uh, strategy we are able to now break down these smes understand their profiles uh, create the right personas and then provide the right products through our technology back uh, you know uh, engine which is able to customize and personalize these products today all right you know and uh, uh... Definitely, this redu- uh, you know this this perhaps uh, leads to uh, you know just the right price points also for MSMEs to be able to ensure uh, health offtake or health benefits offtake you know for all of their employees you know a large section and perhaps even extend it to uh, you know their families and uh, uh, and 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 uh, uh, their loved ones. Uh, all right, these are now my last uh, uh, you know questions to all of you. And uh, Prasenjit, starting with you, you know, uh, in this uh, uh, current year, you know, this year that we speak of so many challenges with the uh, global business environment, which is already depressed, uh, you know, also growth uh, uh, rates are depressed across the world. India is said to be one of the shining stars. Uh, how do you view, uh, uh, you know, the credit rating business? How do you see the offtake of credit rating uh, for MSMEs? Uh, in this uh, particular year, and you know how uh, how do you think you know some of those challenges uh, can be addressed, and what will uh, Smera actually be working at to uh, increase the uh, penetration of uh, uh, credit rating, especially when it comes to MSMEs? Is there anything in particular, any programs in particular that you have that you could highlight for us? Yeah. So uh, I think one is uh, the credit uptake for the MSME sector uh, we have seen has grown significantly by around 16% over the last one year. And uh, uh, a significant part of it is driven by the export credit line guarantee scheme, which provided huge uh, liquidity relief to MSMEs during, uh, uh, during, during and after the COVID pandemic. And uh, also the revival in the in the in the service sector has supported the MSME growth significantly, uh, and we also have seen that uh, the bank's exposure to NVFCs has grown significantly by almost thirty one percent in the last one year, which uh, which which uh, and a large part of that actually goes to the MSME segment. Now, uh, you uh, when it comes to delinquencies, I think uh, we see that uh, many thought that uh, the delinquency levels will be high in MSME as an impact of the COVID. Uh, but uh, what we see is that the extent of the default is limited and the delinquency levels are moderate and on a decline across banks and NBFCs. Um, we feel that domestic growth drivers are strong and uh, the economy is currently resilient enough to support the MSME growth momentum and therefore the great offtake in this segment as well. Uh, plus, I think the government's push uh, for higher capital expenditure in some of the sectors uh, like roads, airports, urban transportation will have its own trickle down effect and will continue to boost the MSME sector. Uh, we have the PLI scheme and, you know, MSMEs are going to be uh, beneficiaries of the PLI scheme as well because whenever there are any large investments, uh, it brings with it uh, a whole ecosystem of uh, ancillaries and subsidiaries, uh, ancillaries and service providers. Uh, the There is a volatility in the global en- environment will, which will result in slowdown in some of the sectors and we have seen, for, for example, sectors like Engineering uh, exports uh, dipping by 10% in February. Uh, but I think uh, overall, the outlook for the NSME credit uptake is going to be quite positive. And uh, NDFCs will continue to play a critical role uh, in increasing the credit penetration in the NSME sector, uh, given the current focus uh, on, on, on this asset class. Uh, so for us also, we therefore are, are trying to uh, have a lot of engagements uh, uh, with the financial institutions 
um, with the with the SMEs, uh, with the with uh, with the associations, industry associations, and we are planning to have a series of webinars and whether we're trying to create some more awareness around the um, uh, assimilating process, the benefits, and um, we so so that's the broad plan that we have for ourselves. All right, you know, thank you very much uh, for that response, Rama. Uh, to you next, you know, uh, Airtel has announced uh, uh, improving the network experience, taking 5G to, uh, you know, over 300 cities uh, uh, in India. Uh, but with 5G, how do you see this demand uh, for enterprise services? Uh, how do you see all of this powering uh, remote healthcare, you know, smart manufacturing, logistics, and, and then totally powering the MSM sector. Okay. Uh, so the, with the deployment of 5G technology, the demand for enterprise services is likely to go up exponentially, right? That's number one. Uh, the benefit of 5G is high-speed network, low latency, and will enable healthcare and smart manufacturing, and even logistics, uh, and powering the growth of SMS, right? The uh, information is critical and it has to be transmitted in a very short period of time. So the faster innovation, better flow of information, more access to market will accelerate digital transformation across industries. Internet will become more seamless, ubiquitous, leading the development of new business models and opportunities for enterprise and SMEs alike. Overall, the deployment of 5G technology will revolutionize the, the way we operate the business and leading to a simple, uh, significant improvements in productivity and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at uh, expanding to about 150 cities by end of March 24. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, can you give us a sense of uh, the business outlook for you? Uh, you know, you said you you want to uh, get about uh, three hundred cities by March twenty twenty four, but you know what is the the outlook for you, the offtake that you uh, see uh, happening in in this uh, financial year? See, enterprise sectors, there are some use cases which we see right with the five G coming in. Right, typically with the uh, in the health sector, you see a lot of robotics being already implemented for surgeries. Right. We have uh, ambulances which are enabled with 5G network. So what it helps the patient uh, from a critical period, a critical time, right, when they are, they are in need of medical assistance till the time they come to the hospital where the travel time is more critical for their life. That is where this 5G technology will help them for the doctors to monitor their uh, medical records uh, while they're reaching the uh, medical uh, hospital, right? So it, that way it is going to help them. And with this low latency, your uh, surgeries, robotic surgeries can be of, my, can you can see an improvisation in the robotic surgeries. That is number two. And with all these industrial automation happening, a 5G private network will be of a great use where we can give them a dedicated network to these industries to run on 5G, and they can also define a certain capacity with low latency uh, to run their operations. That's how it is going to uh, grow this year. But give us a sense of how this will uh, you know, grow your business. What is your outlook for growth? See, in the, uh, in the SME space, right? So uh, these are healthcare is definitely growing. So we're looking at uh, at least a 20-30% growth in the business and adoption this year. And primarily, it is coming out right now, if you ask me on the SME side, right yes. now it is coming on the healthcare uh, and the small manufacturing industries who want to automate, uh, we want to look at quality and technology deployment. So these are two major industries which uh, we will see an uh, uptake this year. Right. So healthcare, you're saying, is one, uh, you know, a big uh, a part where the business could come from. And the other, you're saying, you know, uh, tech adoption uh, for a whole host of uh, uh, companies. Thank you very much, uh, Rama, for that. 
uh, Kulin, you know, you have the last word once again. Uh, but, you know, as Rama pointed out, that healthcare perhaps, uh, you know, will be one of the business segments where they see a lot of offtake uh, coming from. Uh, what is your view on uh, business growth for onshority this year, you know, and uh, is there any new focus area? Uh, is there anything new that you could uh, uh, tell us or speak to us about uh, that you have in mind uh, for this financial year in terms of your products and services? I know being a very young company uh, and uh, just three years old, right at the end of the day, we saw a very good adoption over the last one year. We saw close to about uh, you know, forex growth in our revenues and close to about, uh, you know, uh, 3x growth in the number of companies that we have onboarded, right? Uh, we are now currently at about 3,500 plus organizations which are adopting on sureties, uh, employee healthcare benefits, and majorly of them, 85% of them are new to healthcare, right? We continue to see that kind of growth uh, given that the pie is so big of the SMEs in India today. Uh, you know, like Prasanjit rightly said, 64 million SMEs and for onshority, we have hardly scratched the surface. So we'll continue to focus on, you know, uh, ensuring that we keep building a very strong tech stack uh, by which we can, you know, provide more and much better services to our end users. From a product perspective, we continue to focus on employee health benefits. But along with that, we intend to provide a lot of more wellness and preventive care uh, opportunities for employees to adopt. We've seen that employees, uh, you know, wherever the employers have not, you know, included their family members, we've seen a lot of employees, you know, now having the wherewithal to, you know, buy sachet or, you know, uh, monthly subscription products for their parents. And that is what we are focusing on again at Onshority. We are building a very strong full stack app where we will see that, hmm, where we will see that the entire um, you know, user journeys that an employee has or the lifetime, uh, uh, the life cycle that we will have of, uh, you know, users on onshority will be completely digital and seamless. We've already launched, uh, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, a completely digital, uh, you know, reimbursement journey, which, uh, you know, is still, uh, you know, with a lot of companies, uh, they use paper forms. We've got a complete digital journey done away with paper forms, done away with, you know, any kind of, a, uh, you know, documentation in hard copy submission to onshority to facilitate uh, claims management. So from that perspective, we are trying to ensure that everything is becoming digital. We're trying to create a healthcare score for our users where we can, you know, start enabling them to understand that, you know, how they can enrich their, uh, you know, health profile by taking the right uh, products from onshority. And obviously uh, at the end of the day, we are ensuring that from an employer perspective, how can we drive more value to them and uh, you know help them to kind of you know attract better uh, employees retain the employees that are already there today and also ensure that how can we create more operational efficiency for them by which we can keep reducing our uh, you know membership cost just to kind of push back the you know uh, benefits back to the customer with uh, you know technology infusion in their journeys so onshority will obviously keep focusing on you know better consumer journey will keep focusing on a better consumer experience and keep using technology and keep you know going deeper with uh, you know using uh, the data points that we already have to ensure that we provide more customized and more personalized products to our user sets so i think that is something that onshority will keep focusing on and the last thing being that you know, um, from an OPD perspective, OPD is completely absent uh, in India. And that is something that we intend to kind of focus on showing that, you know, how we can provide OPD products by and thereby kind of reducing the out of pocket expenses uh, for our users. All right, Jalan, we wish you uh, all the best uh, with it. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Kulin, for being a part of this uh, conversation. Uh, Prasenjit, uh, thank you very much for your time, you know, and giving us your sense yeah. on, on uh, you know, uh, MSMEs, their journey towards uh, credit rating and, you know, so credit offtake. Uh, how do you see that uh, coming along this year? And Rama, thank you very much for taking us through and giving us a sense of, uh, you know, how companies, especially MSMEs, are uh, 
uh, evaluating when it comes to digital transformation and you know where you see the big uh, uh, areas of growth. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your thoughts Thank and you. for your time today. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good day. Thank you.